Hello, I'm Jorge Briseño, Director of Instructional Television for KLCS TV, and welcome to Reform the LA Way with Los Angeles Unified School District Board President, Monica Garcia. Today's topic is Project SPIN, which stands for Suicide Prevention and Intervention Now. And we'll be joined a little later in our program by Holly Primi Diaz, an Intervention Coordinator, Alan Acosta, Director of Strategic Initiatives for the LA Gay and Lesbian Center, and student Shay Ott from James Monroe High School to discuss Project SPIN and how they're helping students with this most serious topic. But first, a chance to talk with Board President Monica Garcia about what's happening this month in the LAUSD. Monica, good to see you again. Good to be here. Again, another very busy uh, uh, past couple of weeks, and so let's start with what's you know been on everybody's mind. Uh, the parcel tax that was potentially slated for November, we talked uh, a little bit about it before, uh, the board decided to support the superintendent and, and postpone it. Um, I just want to hear a little bit, what was your sure. uh, uh, thoughts and, and the reasoning for doing that in the middle of, of what is a financial crisis? So it's June and we get to celebrate the class of 2012 and we also have to acknowledge the thousands of people who have sent an email, made a phone call, talked to board member or superintendent in the street and just said, hey, you need a different solution. We can't have all these cuts in LA. There is no way that we want to see uh, reductions in adult ed, in special ed, in SRLDP, in my art class. So people want to see a different solution. For us, it means that we keep monitoring the state. And when the governor said the deficit had gone from $9 billion to $16 billion, that means California is going to make a big decision this coming November where we hopefully support the governor's initiative so that there is uh, a solution for the state. What that means is that instead of having another initiative, uh, our local initiative on the ballot, we need to support the state initiative so that we could figure out what that state picture looks like and then be able to create our local solution. And that's still a very real deal. We just have to go first at the state level and then at the local level. The other thing is that now every bargaining unit has a proposed uh, agreement regarding furloughs for next year. That means we're asking students to contribute by uh, having five days less of instruction next year and then uh, asking employees to do the five days of instruction and five days of non-paid days, which is uh, the equivalent of a 5% pay cut. Right. Uh, it's a big deal. It is for the fourth year in a row. We're asking employees to contribute to the well-being of the system. Um, what we have heard from communities, employees, students, and staff, people want to do what they can to preserve the very valuable services. So uh, I know there's seven board members and a superintendent that wants to see restoration of the arts program, restoration of the adult ed program, restoration of SRLDP. And while there may be cuts still, and we know there are cuts still, right. uh, we know this goes a long way into ensuring that some of those very critical services continue for another year, and then we'll see what the voters say in November. And as you stated to me earlier, uh, what re this really means is that the, the burden is being spread across all employees and students as well. And you hit on some of the areas that, that this is going to impact. Uh, you mentioned the, the ability to keep some of the arts programs, um, uh, the ability to, to be able to keep some elements of, of the early ed and then some elements of adult ed. All this is a benefit of some of the concessions that the, the mo or all of the bargaining unions have now made. Right, everyone. Everyone from our janitors and custodians and uh, bus drivers and the trades and the police and our teachers and principals, people want to see uh, some of our services preserved at higher levels than we can afford. And so uh, we are hopeful that people get back to work, that the economic uh, well-being of the state uh, corrects itself, and, but we will continue to take money from central offices and put them out mm -hmm. to schools. We will continue to um, challenge our school sites to come up with different ways of spending money. But we do know that for today, when we're looking at $390 million of cuts, the $220 million that are returned to the system by the 5% pay cut is significant for all of our students. Now we have a little bit of time here before the break, but there's two items that I'm, that I'm hoping to get your uh, input on. And one is there was a recent ruling regarding uh, teacher evaluation and the use of assessment. And also uh, we just heard that our student English learner proficiency rates uh, have once again 
move forward and have uh, uh, actually surpassed even the states. Yes, so we'll give a shout out to all the English learners and their teachers and support staff who are helping them do better. Uh, it's wonderful to see Los Angeles leading in the redesignation of English learners. That's a very important piece of the work we do every day. On the Doe versus Daisy, when we're in court, and what the judge said is that state law uh, trumps our bargaining our collective bargaining. What the judge said is that we have to use metrics to evaluate teachers and he's giving the, us an opportunity to work with our labor partner and present a solution but he's also saying to us you have to use student data in evaluation of teachers. Well I'm sure that's a topic that we're going to be coming back to more than once uh, but at this moment we're going to take a break and we're going to be right back with our guest to discuss Project SPIN, the suicide and prevention intervention program being implemented in the LAUSD. Please don't go away. is doing this year for the first time is we're donating grants to specific schools that we've done library makeovers for in the past. So this specific school, 68th Street Elementary, we did an extreme library makeover in 2011. We're coming back and we're donating a grant to focus on literacy for kindergarten through third grade students here at 68th Street. Um, we're donating money, we're donating technology, and ultimately we're giving back 5% of our revenue to education within our communities. Students, the parents, the teachers, everyone here is very lucky to be involved in a partnership with some entity like Target. Target has donated unbelievable amounts of money to education, and you can see the results right here at our school. It's the 61st annual California State Science Fair, and it draws a thousand students from across the state, from uh, 27 different affiliated fairs. We have 880 uh, different projects. Over 400 high schools are represented. A huge staff here at the California Science Center and volunteers that help put on the fair. We have uh, prizes for uh, 36 different categories in junior and senior and uh, they are awarded medals for first, second, third, and fourth place, along with a monetary award. I learned about murky waters, this type of thing, in sixth grade, and I started to get interested in this type of thing when um, I was assigned a project on mangrove habitats. And um, what happened was I learned also about the Gulf oil spill, which had an effect on uh, habitats as well on the Gulf Coast. And um, I got interested in this project because I was thought, well, of course, this is a big problem today with a lot of oil spills. And I thought it would be really awesome to do a project on something like that. It's a big deal. It's uh, the official California State Science Fair. Kids are very excited. We're in the middle of public viewing right now. And all kinds of people are here talking to the students about their fair tomorrow. We'll have the actual judging and award ceremonies in the evening tomorrow night. In the end, what I learned was we need to not only help clean up oil spills, but also need to find another way to change the things that are cleaning them up. So we need to find two different ways to clean the things up. Welcome back to Reform the LA Way. Join us, joining us to discuss Project SPIN, Suicide Prevention and Intervention Now, are Holly Previdias, an Intervention Coordinator, Alan Acosta, Director of Strategic In Initiatives for LA's Gay and Lesbian Center, and student Shay Och from James Monroe High School. Welcome to you all. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. And Mr. Acosta, I'd like to start with you. Will you please give us a little bit of, of, of background about uh, how this partnership came together uh, and, and who it's serving? Sure. Um, Back in the fall of 2010, uh, there was a rash of suicides among LGBTQ youth that got a lot of uh, national media. It had been going along, on for a long time, but it got some attention in the national media. At that point, uh, we at the center uh, 
sat down and said, what can we do that's comprehensive, that's different? And we knew that the school district was doing a lot of good work. We already, we knew that. But we thought perhaps with a more comprehensive approach that we could, we could contribute to and bring other partners into, that we really could achieve something unique and um, something very different than was being done anywhere else in the country. And just to be clear for folks that may not, that may, may not be aware, LGBTQ, mm -hmm. lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and uh, questioning. Uh, questioning. Yeah, okay, yeah, just, just yeah. to make sure. Um, and, uh, you know, we talked earlier, we, we do want to make sure that, that, that we uh, uh, mention the fact that it is Pride Month, mm -hmm. and so it's a very, very timely topic. Um, and Monica, and, you know, we didn't get to talk about earlier, but there was a resolution just put forth uh, that the board was supporting in regards to this. Right, since 1988, the LAUSD school board has been acknowledging and observing Pride Month and uh, asking our staff to uh, engage in activities, engage in lessons, learn and support all together and make safe spaces for all. And I think that's what I remember so much about mm -hmm. that first conversation. There was a real concern in the community that if we didn't do have a system-wide solution mm -hmm. about uh, acknowledging, supporting, training, and really intervening that we were going to be left to answer to a lot of young people who are in distress. Right. And we felt that uh, that there was a good basis for doing what we wanted to do, but we were talking about mental health uh, in, in, you know, in a comprehensive way, family acceptance, getting out to the parents, there's a lot of the work that you do, um, curriculum. We really wanted to look at this from across the board, so not just to end suicide among LGBTQ youth, but end suicidal ideation, the thinking, the thoughts about suicide, and how, what could you do in that area? You had to change the culture, and that's what you said that first day. We need to change the culture so young people don't even think about this anymore. How do you get there? And that's, that's what we've come and up with. And that was bold. And Holly, how is the school district working on providing folks training or support to help adults be more comfortable in embracing uh, the students in the, uh, in the LGBTQ population? Um, we're really proud to say that LA Unified has really been paving the way for affirming schools. And so what we have done is we have created policies that are not only in alignment with the state standards and uh, the current legislation, but from what we know is right and being positive and affirming to all students and families and to our staff. So we provide trainings for adults, the staff, community, students, um, and parents, making sure that we can recognize what bullying is or how do we recognize the warning signs and what are the appropriate actions to take in making sure that our schools are respectful, affirming, and safe places for all students. Uh, Holly, let me follow up on that a little bit because you did mention bullying and that was one of the questions that I had. How does this type of training, this type of awareness overlap with uh, some of the efforts that we're making in, in the anti-bullying campaigns? Well, one of the things that um, all the research is showing that there a lot of the suicides or suicides attempts have sometimes have been directly correlated to bullying that have gone unresolved or un or un either unresolved in the schools or at home or so forth and so what we're trying to do is we're trying to prevent them teach about what are the warning signs and not just about how do we prevent bullying but how do we create a, a safe space where people feel respected and and welcome in our environments because we know that when students feel welcome they are they they progress they achieve and so we know that there's a direct correlation of making sh sure that our students are feeling safe in schools Speaking of students, we do have Shay with us here. We want to make sure we get you to the conversation. Um, obviously, we, we, we frequently have adults, you know, talking about what's best for students. Um, from your perspective, how do you feel a program like this is impacting students and how they feel? Is this making school safer for them? Um, I think that it's giving students, it's giving them another way because a lot of students, they'll think, you know, I'm this way, I'm that way, and the only way to handle that is to hurt themselves. And so when you have organizations and things like this that step in and intervene on the student's behalf, it creates a way for a student to feel a little safer, like they have someone to talk to, to speak to, to um, be open with about themselves and think that there's an alternative route to, you know, dealing with things that might be hard to deal with about themselves as opposed to just taking their life when, um, I mean, I myself, I could have taken my life, you know, when I found things, when I found it hard to deal with things, but I didn't. And it led to me being able to go to college and being able to be successful. So I think when you have programs put in place that give students alternative routes, it'll lead to more success 
within you know those students. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that one this is an important thing because when young people arrive at the schoolyard, they've been battered by homophobia and transphobia for many years. This isn't like they get to school and they start getting bullied. They have had a lot of psychological damage and violence done to them before they get there. So bringing in all these different um, organizations and working together with the school district, both on their life inside the schools and outside the schools, uh, that, that's exactly what we're trying to do, Shay. Yeah, I agree. And um, even myself, um, I had been told you know, a lot throughout my childhood you know, uh, gay is bad, or that's, you know, just different types of slurs to really dehumanize that sort of lifestyle. But, um, you know, joining GSA in high school, oh, and- that's what GSA is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. G oh, GSA is the, um, the Gay Straight Alliance. It um, assimilates gay and straight students to kind of fight homophobia and transphobia. So a lot of people will think, oh, it's just for gay students. But it's not, because straight students as well, they are able to go in and see the different types of people that they're, you know, that um, join those type of clubs and they can see, okay, so these people aren't just these weird retro whatever that we've been, that we've kind of come to know through the different types of homophobia that have been present throughout their lives. As you mentioned, it humanizes. Yeah, it does. It, it really does humanize um, people. And I think that it's, it's a crucial part of the high school experience. And I'm glad I joined because it really changed my opinion about a lot of things. And tell us about the campus. What, what do you think, uh, what kinds of behaviors help support students who are willing to, you know, go and learn, find out, um, let me talk with other students? What kind of support do you, do you, do you and your friends uh, appreciate from other adults? Um, I think me and my friends appreciate adults who maybe aren't so hidebound in, um, maybe what they've known before, but can just say, okay, there are different alternative lifestyles that can be lived. Um, we've had teachers around campus who have taken stickers that say, you know, this is an open and affirming space, and they took it and they put it on their walls and boards and everything, and it kind of just reassures the student and just lets you know that you can be white or black or brown or blue <laughs> or, um, you know, gay or lesbian or straight or whatever, but here, um, we see past that. We see that you're a human being with emotions and needs, and we can cater to that. Isn't that wonderful? It is. Isn't that wonderful? So you're talking about a, you're not more money and not anybody believing differently. It's really people being open. Mm -hmm. I think that's such a beautiful statement. Yeah. yeah. We want to see that everywhere. Yes, right. Holly? Yes, yeah. we do. We need to see that everywhere. And you know, it takes time, and I think we need to continue to educate and it help people to be exposed to di just different ideas and, and not to be afraid to have conversations. And one of the things that I find really interesting is um, I lead a lot of conversations with students, and they always say, you know, I just want someone to listen to us. I, we, I wish that the adults would listen to us more. They would learn that we're not scary people. <laughs> and that goes for all students, no matter, you know, what ethnicity, again, what gender, orientation, whatever it may be. Students sometimes feel like adults aren't listening to them. And so with that listening comes the learning and so and hopefully the acceptance as well. And so we, we try to support adults engage in those um, affirming relationships with students and with each other as well. So. For two years now we've had a summit where we've brought people together and we it was hosted over at the Gay and Lesbian Center and different folks came together talked about their specific project but at the bottom line it was about caring and it talked us, we started last year talking with families, mm -hmm. right? And how difficult it was right. for parents to get support. Right. And really rooted the uh, reaching out and caring about people. Right. And I thought it was just such ama an amazing gathering where all students need support. Mm -hmm. And while we were focused on uh, gay, lesbian, transgender, questioning youth, we knew that that was important for all students and the culture change of acceptance or listening right. was something that benefited everyone on campus. Right, and it takes place not only in the schools, but it has to take place in the churches. It, you have to get the community partners who are involved in kids' lives involved as well. You know, law enforcement, all these groups need to be working together on that to, to give that sense of resilience and security and healthiness and mental health to, to the young people. and. 
Um, that's a really exciting, exciting uh, initiative that we're, we're embarked on here. And I really believe it's the only one in the country like this. And, and we're hearing that as we now talk about it in other places. So mm -hmm. it's very exciting for LA, for the, unit, for the school district, and for the Gay and Lesbian Center as well. You mentioned the, the, the community supporting the student. The, the one part that I've yet to hear a little bit about uh, is parents. How do parents play into all this? Because I know that you know we're definitely focusing on making the school a safer place, uh, but then also the parents have to be able to, to provide an environment for students where, where they can also feel themselves and be themselves. Is this outreach also going out to parents? Is helping them? Because sometimes I know that it's not easy for them to understand or accept. Right, and, that, and uh, I'd like to answer that. I, I think uh, parents, we, have, we are offering trainings for parents, and parents are very receptive. They're actually reaching out to us to ask for what else can we do? How else, you know, if we're not comfortable with certain topics, what do we say? How, help us. And so we have been offering trainings. We. Um, offer uh, uh, focus groups with parents. We have a lot of resources available for parents as well. So parents definitely are our partners and so they have um, demonstrated that they want to continue that relationship and grow with with us. And how do they reach you? That, I mean, it's, it's a very basic question, but how do, they, how do they reach you? How do they come to know of your services? Well, through either through their schools or, their, or our website. The LA Unified website has a family section there. Uh, the Human Relations Office has a section there. So the website is where every day we're trying to make it friendlier and friendlier for families. And then through the schools, getting information out through the schools that filter through the Parent Community Services branch. Um, through also each of the uh, parent community uh, centers at the schools have information. So we're trying as much as possible to get the information out to parents to involve them. And at the Gay and Lesbian Center, we also have a family services program. And Project Spin has, a, uh, has a, its own website, projectspin.org, that anybody can go to. And there's a full uh, complement of resources available to people. And we have a coordinator who will then connect the parent to the appropriate you know, whatever help they need or resource they need. They and, you know, that. speaking of, of projectspin.org, it was, in familiar myself with the organization, I realized, you know, I knew it was LAUSD and I, and I knew it was uh, uh, the LA Gay and Lesbian Center, but when I saw the list of, right. of partners, you have over a dozen. Right. Um, how do you coordinate all, all, all those resources and, and do they just, can they all come through you? Are you like a clearinghouse for yeah, all these? Yeah, we are, and that's really an important, uh, something we really bring that's very important to this issue is that, um, the center um, is the largest LGBT organization in the country, but we have brought together partners such as the Trevor Project, GSA Network, um, GLSEN, and ACLU, and County Department of Mental Health to all be together working on this. And, um, and then through our coordinator, which the center has hired, um, brings, uh, brings in these people and then matches people to the right organization. Well, you mentioned a lot of important partners, but I, I was found it very interesting how you, how you basically cover all your bases. I saw Children's Hospital mm -hmm. there. I saw right. PFLAG exactly. there. Exactly. Uh, so I, I found it very interesting that, that every pretty much aspect of a child's life somehow was addressed. Police uh, yes. uh, were involved. Yes. And that's, that is really one of the ways that this, again, is unique, that working with the school district, we have all these groups around the same table. That isn't happening in other cities, and we hope that this is a model for the country that to bring all these groups together to work together. That's right. And part of the public sector with reduced resources, the best resources are the people. Mm -hmm. And uh, how would you answer to someone who says, you know, school districts don't really have a place there. They should be focused on reading and writing. They should be focused only on academics. What would your response be? Um, I would say that school districts, they have an obligation to protect their students because it's like if the students are coming to school, if they're putting in their time, and you know they're giving into the resources and you know they're using them utilizing them then I think um, inherently that the school board and the district should really take care of the students not only as far as academics go and maybe sports and extracurriculars but also in terms of just safety uh, creating safer spaces for students to learn to grow to prosper um, because you want poignant places that students can go to and become better beings because I think the ultimate goal in going to school is not only to become you know, a more intelligent individual to go to college and to get a career, but to thrive and grow as an individual and as a human being, you know, growing in the, in the world. How beautiful, how beautiful. What are your plans for next year? Uh, next year, I am going to Vassar College on a full ride scholarship in Poughkeepsie, New York, and I will be double majoring in English and pre-med. 
how fabulous, how fabulous. I'm so proud of you. you. Uh, tell me, where did you learn these leadership skills? Where did you learn these communication skills? How have you supported yourself through that? Um, well, I was an avid member of speech and debate in high school. I also won first in the state in that. Okay. And, nice. um, <laughs> thank you. Well, and, well, uh, well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, um, I was in speech and debate. Um, I joined GSA. Um, I started a poetry club, and I was in Key Club, which is a community service club. And so kind of those different things that I've done, they've kind of correlated to help me, you know, be a little bit more confident about myself and just really go head on. You know, I think what we have in Shea is, is just a shining example of, of the possibilities in terms of students who who contemplate suicide, who sadly go through with suicide, what we are missing out on as a, as a society, the accomplishment that, that Shea, you know, what he's going to contribute and what he's contributed so far. Um, not to bring a downer to this, but how real is is this problem in our in our school district? Well, it's very real. I mean, you probably know the statistics for the school district better than I, but what we do know is that LGBTQ youth are disproportionately represented in every aspect of mental health um, indicators. So in suicide, much more um, likely that a LGBTQ youth student may, may consider an, uh, suicide. That's the part that I thought was interesting because you, you, you or the statistics uh, also track on not just who commits suicide, but how many students have thought of suicide, which, which obviously means that there is something in their life that's led them to even consider it. So, and we know this means suicide ideation is really um, reaching out of the fear of uh, anyone who is dealing with depression, thoughts of suicide is they're needing help. How do you recommend to a young person who is questioning and struggling, what should they do? I think they need to reach out and they need to, they have to go to someone because it's like, you can sit there and you can wallow in your depression and you can be very confused by yourself, but sometimes it's better to really just go and help someone um, and try to get help and really try to get help. And that's why you have these organizations in place because they do reach out to students. Sometimes students don't necessarily hear the call. So um, I think that if you're struggling with that, if you're in pain or you're hurting or you know whatever's going on with you, you have to reach out to someone. Beautiful, yeah. you have to reach out. Let's make sure we say that uh, loud and clear in LA Unified, every one of our schools, we want our young people to reach out. Thank you, Jorge. Thank you uh, for all for being here. And thank you for joining us. If you want to learn more about the reform efforts taking place in the LAUSD or to contact me, visit LAUSD.net. As we continue to reform our schools in order to create the best and safest educational opportunities for our students, it requires all of us to do our part. I'm Monica Garcia. Together we will reform education, achieve 100% graduation, and make the LAUSD the best school district in the nation. Thank you.